The Mama Take Heart podcast with Rabrina Rettel is brought to you by Life Audio and is a part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. Welcome to Mama Take Heart, understanding your Gen Z girl. I'm your host, Rabrina Rettel, here to help you be the compassionate, gospel-centered, and influential voice in your girl's life. When a child falls and chips a tooth or breaks a bone, our natural reaction is to seek medical attention. When a child is struggling in school, she's told to try harder, when in reality, she may have a learning disorder. I want to tackle the subject of learning disorders because both of my children have learning disabilities. I hope to calm fears and apprehension for parents who are reluctant to get their child evaluated because they don't want a stigma or label put on the child. And also for parents who don't want the child to know she has a learning disorder because they're afraid her self-esteem will be affected and it will make her feel less worthy, important, or intelligent than her peers. Well, we know the latter isn't true because God's word tells us in Psalm 139, 14, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Well, we read, believe, and trust God's word and his ways. So I chose to ask God to show me what to do to help my kids navigate their personal difficulties in a way that they still knew their value. And I believe he gave me the desire to try to understand how their brains worked. So I began to research. So we're going to start by answering uh, some of the questions uh, like, what is a learning disorder? What can cause learning disorders? What signs I should look for? And how can I advocate for my child to get her the help she needs? Let's start with the question, what are learning disorders or disabilities? Learning disabilities, also known as LD, which is how I'll be referring to learning disabilities slash disorders today, is a group of disorders that affect how someone learns. It's an information processing problem, which creates a gap between expected skills at a specific age or grade level. And it's not mental illness or a determining factor of intelligence. The child's brain is wired differently. According to an article on the Mayo Clinic site, these disorders involve difficulty in one or more uh, neurological processes, auditory and visual processing, which uh, processes information by visual and auditory in reading, spelling, writing, and understanding or using language. Also, sequencing, abstraction, and organization, which relates to prioritizing, organizing, doing mathematics, and following instructions. Then we'll have memory working, such as short-term and long-term memory. So storing or retrieving information, short and long. This is interesting because my son in particular He can remember something that happened a long time ago, but something you just tell him he can't remember. So also we have expressive language, which is spoken language. And then also there's motor skills, fine and gross. Now they can determine clumsiness, difficulty in handwriting, or the ability to tie their shoe. And people don't really think about those things because they're so small. And um, however, for some people, it can be very difficult. Common learning disabilities are dyslexia, which is a reading disability, dysgraphia, which is a writing disability, dyscalculia, math disability, and on also nonverbal learning disorder, or NVLD. And that is a range of conditions that include social and spatial disabilities. 
And people with NVLD have trouble with executive functioning, organization, and nonverbal communication, which affects one's ability to read social cues. Now, what causes learning disabilities? Well, there's no single cause. And however, there can be contributing factors that can be any of the following. Family genetics. So family history of learning disorders, which some people aren't aware of because a lot of them were not evaluated or people did not know of the learning disabilities in that time as they do now. They weren't as aware. Okay, another um, contributing factor could be prenatal and neonatal risks. Psychological trauma or abuse may affect early brain development. Then you have physical trauma such as head injuries or nervous system infections. That can be something like meningitis. And then there finally is environmental exposure to toxins and lead. So what are the signs of a learning disorder? The signs can be any of the following. A child who doesn't master skills in reading, spelling, writing, or math at a near or expected age and grade levels. Has difficulty understanding and following instructions has trouble remembering what someone just told her, that's like my son, lacks coordination in walking, sports, or skills such as holding a pencil, easily loses or misplaces homework, school books, or other items, which is why it's really important for us to help them with organization. Has difficulty understanding the concept of time, resist doing homework or activities that involve reading, writing, or math, or consistently can't complete homework assignments without significant help, acts out or shows defiance, hostility, or excessive emotional reactions at school or while doing academic activities such as homework or reading. I remember there was a time where I literally had to sit at the table uh, with my kids and so I would find things to do whether it was writing its things out a list or whatever while they were doing schoolwork so that I could be accessible uh, to help them and sometimes we would be sitting at that table for two hours just going in and out of assistance and I remember that was uh, quite a few years that that was pretty much our routine and then they kind of started getting the drift of things that were going on or, or enhanced their learning skills in the disabled area and were able to do on their own and I could just check in with them. But you know, that's quite a list. Not all of the signs need to be present for you to want to seek help. For me, I noticed my son struggles very early, but I didn't notice signs in my daughter for quite some time, not until she was a teenager. Girls can mask these disorders and they can show up as being a perfectionist, as anxiety or depression. I had no idea her brain was working overtime to keep up. Well, I started paying close attention and I observed and documented when they were doing homework. When I asked questions about school, I spoke to the teachers. Um, I've had good and not so good experiences with speaking to teachers, but most of the teachers want to see your child succeed. Uh, my son in particular, his first grade teacher actually, she started seeing things, uh, Mrs. Danielson. Well, once she alerted me that she there were some things going on with him, I started watching him closely. And then the other teacher who taught both my son and my daughter was their third grade elementary teacher, Mrs. Weatherhold. She was a student of her students. Mrs. Weatherhold worked diligently with both of my children and she mentioned areas in which she saw them struggle. We talked about what they were learning in class and how I could help reinforce the learning at home. When Mrs. Weatherhold had time, 
she provided individual attention to my son in particular to ensure he stayed on track in class. That year, my son was diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and a learning disability. It would be six years before my girl was diagnosed. And that is something that you wanna keep in mind. So how do I advocate for my child to get her the help that she needs? Well, the earlier the diagnosis, of course, the better. Uh, So the LD can be addressed. It isn't something people grow out of, uh, so it's important to address it and to help your girl put strategies in place so that she can navigate life successfully. First, you want to get her evaluated. And there's a battery of tests that she can take. Uh, She can complete them either at school or with a psychologist, depending on what your school system uh, offers. And it will determine if a learning disability is present. Once the results are available, it's advised to schedule an appointment with a school counselor or a special education counselor to discuss the next steps. Based on the findings, you may be able to incorporate one or more of the following an Individualized Education Program, or IEP. Under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, public schools in the United States are mandated to provide an individualized education program for students who meet certain criteria for a learning disorder. The IEP is a way to set learning goals and determines strategies and services to support your girl and her learning in school. Two is accommodations. Classroom accommodations might include more time to complete assignments or tests, use of computer applications that support writing, or even provide audiobooks to supplement reading. Then there's a 504 plan, and that is under the Americans with Disabilities Act. To ensure that a student with a disability has access to accommodations that can improve academics, And to qualify for a 504 plan, a student must have a diagnosis for a physical or emotional disability or impairment. Uh, That restricts, that could be ADHD, and it restricts one or more life activities. Then there's a 504 plan, which is under the Americans with Disabilities Act. And this is to ensure a student with a disability has access to accommodations that can improve academics. To qualify for a 504 plan, a student must have a diagnosis for a physical or emotional disability or impairment, like ADHD. That restricts one or more major life activities, such as attention and class participation. And finally, extra help. A reading specialist, a math tutor, which my kids utilize a math tutor from middle school all the way through high school. Uh, Also, other trained professionals who can teach your child techniques to improve her academic, organizational, and study skills. If you homeschool your child, you can check with your public school district to see if a homeschool partnership is available. When I started this episode, I started by telling you that I have Gen Zers with learning disorders, and at times it has been a battle But now, one is a junior at the university here studying journalism, and the other just started his first semester at a local community college. I just want to encourage you that you can do this. It's a team effort. It takes the school, the family, and the counselors, and your child to help set them up for a successful or at least not as stressful school year. And also, what you put in place now will help them to be able to navigate through life. If you'd like to learn more, I've listed helpful resources in the show notes. Also, I encourage you to listen to a previous episode. There's two previous episodes, a two-part conversation with ADHD coach Jennifer Campfee of Fantastically Focused. 
Part one is understanding your ADHD child. Part two is how to help and support your ADHD child. Jennifer shares her story as a mom with an ADHD child and provides ways to help your child thrive. Remember, God is for you and you are not alone. With his spirit, you are filled with courage and strength of purpose. So don't fret, Mama. Instead, take heart. Mama Take Heart is a production of Life Audio and the Salem Web Network. If you liked what you just listened to, would you take a second and leave us a rating in your favorite podcast app? It really does help more people like you find our show. This podcast is produced by me, Kelly Givens, and Stephen Sanders, with executive oversight by Stephen McGarvey. You can find more podcasts like this over at lifeaudio.com. Thank you.